What's well, a beautiful day on the trail? Well, that is unless you're a Chinese-made drive bearing, and then uh, then you're kind of hating life if that's it. So the old Thunder Chicken was clipping along, doing fine, till all of a sudden, sudden clam, thunk, bang, and there she went. Took out the uh, you know the clutch side drive shaft bearing, and in the process, exploded the chain case as well. So we had a two for one deal on that. So now we're waiting on a uh, a plastic kid sled or something to throw underneath the track to get this thing home. If anybody's wondering, it's for sale, cheap, best off I mean best offer. As you can see, the uh, drive shaft is now interfering with the uh, suspension, so we're kind of screwed there. So it won't even roll. So earlier in the day, um, well, actually about 50 miles ago, the speedometer quit working. Now I know what that you know that can sometimes mean the little uh, drive key down at the bottom sheared off, and you know something's no good with that bearing. Well, we stopped and uh, checked things over. The cable wasn't froze up. Um, tried moving the drive shaft around. There was no play in it. Um, had the track up in the air. Ran it. No strange noises. No vibrations. Um, figured maybe that little angle drive just went out. So I mean drove on we were already over 100 miles away well 111 miles away from uh the trailer so what can you do at this point but keep going well being that the chain case is foo barred i don't even think we have a chance of trail repairing this one i can't believe i'm fulfilling the stereotype of the uh broken down cat on the side of the trail well we just had a couple of yamahas pass through here at about mach 2 um yeah, this really hurts my pride being broke down like this. I mean, I drive pieces of junk all the time, but I do try and do a lot of preventative maintenance and actually keep them reliable. I mean, it was about a season or two ago where I, you know, had moved the skid out, had given everything a solid once over. It was a brand new bearing. I think it was a parts unlimited. I can't remember exactly for sure, but um, I needed it at the time when I replaced it. And, you know, it was your standard um, generic replacement. Well, we learned that lesson, so, I mean, I think there might have been 800 miles on that bearing, and, uh, it's shot. One thing that Cat didn't put in the toolbox was a, um, set of them orange, you know, caution triangles that the truckers put out when you broke down. You know, it could also really use a set of playing cards in that kit, too, to, you know, pass the time. Got the other riding group out looking for some materials or something to strap underneath the skid. Maybe a, a kid's sled or cardboard or who knows what. I mean, worst case scenario, we're going to have to go all bare grills and start chopping down limbs off of trees and, you know, shoving them underneath the track. If we do that, it'll be, uh, it'll help groom the trail. I mean, one positive note is that uh, I'm finally going to get some good fuel mileage while it's on the tow strap. Well, here's what we got. So we're not uh, we're not at the uh, tree branch stage yet. So we got an overpriced tarp from the local store, some cardboard, and some uh, some red and uh, blue rope. I mean, it's not Articat colors, but we'll make do with what we got. All right. So the plan is take this uh, exceedingly expensive tarp, fold it in half, and use a piece of rope through the front of the V and tie that up in front of the um, the suspension that way it just kind of drags it along and then uh maybe tie a couple of things in the back just so it doesn't push out one way or the other so there's the uh sliding portion of this recovery rig and we're going to try and spread that cardboard out as much as possible on the tarp because i'm paying for the tarp i'm going to try and save the tarp for future use as much as possible so um yeah so we just tied that from the front down to the A-arm or whatever you can tie on to. Oh yeah, she's a butte, Clark. So uh, yeah, there's the back end. All right, moment of truth.
That's going to be an interesting ride. I don't know how many miles back we are now, but if you want a wild ride, go for a ride on an ice road at about 30-40 with no brakes or uh, constant drift mode. I was playing uh, snowbank ping pong here on the way in. Well, now we're back in the uh, sled's natural habitat, the shop, and uh, we're giving it a little bit of an autopsy. Pulled the pipes off. Uh, found one missing spring, but, you know, that was just weight savings, I guess. Well, here's the moment of truth, I guess. We'll see what's underneath that chain case cover. Huh. <laughs> I guess the chain's just hanging. I was expecting this to be in, like, multiple pieces. I mean, it's definitely tore up a little bit, but I was expecting the chain to be, like, uh, you know, exploded and crumpled up in the bottom of the chain case. Alright. Let's see what's next. Some of that damage was actually on there before. So, uh, I mean, could have been worse. I'd say the uh, dipstick might need replaced. So it definitely kicked the bottom gear over there to the side, but, uh, I mean, it's still attached to the crankshaft. Uh, heck, even the tensioner still sort of works. Dang. I, I'm hesitating to say it, but might have got off a little bit lucky here. So there is a nice pile of metal shavings down there at the bottom. Uh, not sure exactly when that came to be. Maybe the bearing started going and the chain was working its way. We definitely got some machining going on the uh, the bolts there, but due to that being a spherical bearing, it kind of let the whole drive shaft just uh, swing back. I mean, hopefully the chain case is solid. If that's the case, we'll have to just replace a few parts. Well, I mean, I think a couple more squirts of grease and uh, this bearing would be good for a while. I am using this tarp until it is nothing but shreds. <laughs> 